Hi, I'm Rana Faruhar, Global Business Columnist and Associate Editor at the Financial Times. And I'm here today to talk about persuasive technology and its effect on your life. And here today to join me are Tristan Harris, the founder of Time Well Spent, and Roger McNamee, the founder of Elevation Partners. So we're here to talk uh, in part about my column about persuasive technology that you all uh, spoke to me about, but also the news, the big news uh, in the world today about the recent cyber hack. Uh, and it's interesting because this is uh, just the tip of what is really a very long spear of how there are costs to technology, the technology that has done so much for us that people are only just becoming aware of. Roger, do you want to tell us what you think about that? This hack seems so incredibly scary because of its pervasiveness. Hundreds and hundreds of companies, hundreds of thousands of people affected, hospitals, delivery services, all kinds of things that really matter in life. And yet it's a very old-fashioned technology hack. And it is, in many ways, not nearly as scary as some of the other things going on in technology now. And historically, we've viewed technology as a place where things always get cheaper and always have lots more performance. What we've never really thought about are the other consequences. Mm. So it's a little like the coal industry, where historically huh. you look at the price of coal and you don't think about the health costs. Yeah. You don't think about the environmental costs that go into it. And those things actually do matter over time. Mm -hmm. And the technology industry, I think, has to face up to its responsibility for the health consequences of some things it does, the financial consequences. And I don't know when that's going to happen. I'm hoping that we can have the conversation now, though, because this hack, the thing that's going on right now, yeah. is a great example of a really big problem and there are actually ones going on right now today that Tristan will talk about that are much worse. It's fascinating. So Tristan, um, before you started Time Well Spent, which is really a movement, a mm -hmm. nonprofit designed to get people to focus on what are these hidden costs of technology that we're not thinking about, you worked for Google. Yeah. Um, tell us what you did there and why that got you interested in this issue. Um, well, I, was a, I became a design ethicist at Google where I was really interested, if you're a technology company, mm -hmm. how do you ethically steer the thoughts of a billion people's lives mm -hmm. that they'll have today? Because every single time your phone buzzes, it schedules a little block of time in your mind where you're going to be thinking about something maybe you didn't want to think about. And if you look at a news feed, you know, 50% of the U.S. population were jacked into one news feed in an election year. Yeah. The thoughts and beliefs of, a, you know, actually two billion people are controlled by the decisions of a handful of designers inadvertently, whether they want to or not, at a tech company. Yeah. And so how do you ethically do that, especially when the incentives of, of these major companies are basically to maximize as much attention as possible. So this is a great point, and actually it's an important point. It's the point that um, I, I think that in some ways is relevant to many worlds, the financial world. Nobody's trying to be venal, but the incentive structures Correct. are wrong. What mm -hmm. you all are saying, I think, is nobody's trying to be venal yes. in the valley, but the currency uh, which is time, attention, brain cells, <laughs> you yeah. know, is, is the wrong one. Um, is that fair? And if so, how do you move to another currency? And what does that mean for the business model of big tech? Well, so, so long as the business model is just pure advertising, where yeah. I make more money, the more of your attention I get. Yeah. I'm on a treadmill. YouTube has to maximize how much attention it gets. Facebook, Snapchat, Netflix. You know, Netflix, the CEO said, our biggest competitors are Facebook, YouTube, and sleep. Yeah. Everything that's not your attention with that product is a competitor to that company. Mm. So we have to change the currency of success. And mm. will that come through regulation? Will that come through decoupling, like what happened in energy utilities, mm. where they actually decoupled profit from uh, from how much uh, energy you use. Right. Uh, there's different ways of doing this, but just like what happened with the cyber attacks, we want to price in the security costs and the, the extra you know, buffer yeah. into the how we develop the product. Wouldn't we want to price in all these sort of human values issues. So yeah. price in cyberbullying into the design of how Facebook can, can fund you know, anti-cyberbullying. Price in fighting fake news into the design of Facebook. These are missing externalities and, that need to be part and, of the conversation. And one of the core things to keep in mind is these products are worth way more to the customers yeah. than they're paying for. Yeah. yeah. I don't actually think the danger here is to the economic value of these businesses. <laughs> right. In fact, I think you can make a reasonable case that Facebook and Google and some of the other large tech companies are now as powerful as countries. Well, they, they have more users in some cases. Well, and, and in some cases more cash. Yeah. And, you know, so they're incredibly valuable. And I think people really love what they, what they offer. 
I think the trick is to find other ways to price these things in. Things that, and, and it doesn't happen to happen overnight, yeah. but having the conversation, what we need to do now is just, let's discuss that there's a problem. Right. Yeah. There let's problem. recognize that there's a problem. Let's recognize that, you know, the circle or some of the other dystopian things that uh, you might read or see movies about, mm. those things have already happened. Well, you all have done an amazing job at raising it. Tristan, I'm going to give the last word to you. Um, what can the companies do right now? What is in their power? Um, what lever can be pushed that could actually make things better now, like immediately? Uh, well, there's a whole set of small little design tweaks. Sometimes it's death by a thousand cuts, but I would actually look long term also at Apple. Um, which is a, a platform maker that sur currently um, sort of mints a currency called attention. Hmm. And that attention uh, can be fraudulently uh, grabbed. You can kind of fraudulently win at the game of just getting attention. Mm. And just like you know, if you're a government, you, people, you know some people you know, fraudulently getting some currency, you can upgrade the currency, make it more secure. So it, does, it includes these other values. Interesting. And Apple is sort of, instead of just minting attention, could, a mint, could mint a, a currency of time well spent where people compete, these apps and media websites compete based on helping us f live, our, live our lives or spend our time well. Amazing. So if I want to get a babysitter or a ride or, you know, the, the, could be, the focus could be on utility as opposed to keeping me online for a certain amount of time. Right. And I think we talked about this for dating apps or yeah. something. You know, a dating app is currently trying to compete to just keep you swiping for as long as possible because yeah. the currency is attention. Yeah. Imagine in this new currency, you care about a, a date tonight. And so uh, you, you know, you say, married not, with two kids. I care not, about sleep tonight. Not, not you, you care about sleep that? tonight, right? Yeah, sure. Well, the point is, what matters for that category? Yeah. And but let's say it's for someone who's who's looking for a date, and they say, I want a date. And imagine at that moment, we ping all the apps and say, Who can help this person hmm. get a date? And and Facebook raises its hand and says, Hey, I've got a salsa class starting down the street in 30 minutes, and we're going to help you. And Tinder says, Hey, I've got someone who's online right now who's available. You know, here you can talk to them, but not swipe. You can talk to them. And so Love the point this. is you want people to be competing for what we want in our lives, not competing just to get attention. So it's really possible to restructure the attention economy if we recognize that the currency of attention is not the currency we want to be fighting for. Tinder, Facebook, hope you're listening. Uh, Tristan, Roger, thanks for being here with me. We're going to be talking to you a lot more in the future.